Hello and welcome back to another episode of Leisure Loop. I have never 3D printed anything in my life. I don't know uh, what 3D printers are like, what setup uh, is gonna actually require. I am an engineer, so hopefully I've got a leg up. I did a few hours of research and I ended up with this. This is a Artillery Sidewinder X1 3D printer. It will uh, print different kinds of plastic. I also ordered a roll of PETG filament. I think I have a lot to learn. 10 minutes from now, you will see me holding my first 3D printed part. How cool is that gonna be for you? I'll let you know when I find the instructions. Let's get started. What is 3D printing? Well, for our sake, 3D printing is the ability to create a three-dimensional model at home made from plastic. The printers work by adding layer by layer of material until a three-dimensional model is complete. Most of these models can come from places online that people have already built and uploaded for you to download and use right away. Thingiverse.com is my absolute favorite website for this. They have hundreds of thousands of models and they're free and you can tip the designer and it's super easy to import these models into the 3D printer application. The 3D printer application that I'm using is called Repetir Host. At least I think that's how you pronounce it. And this application allows me to take this three-dimensional model that I've downloaded for free, import it, make minor changes if I want. From here, I have to make a plan for my 3D printer. You do this by entering the printer settings, the plastic settings that you're using, then you put it together with a slicer. This is basically the algorithm that turns this three-dimensional model and all your settings into a file that your printer is able to follow. Now that I have my code made, I can see exactly what the plan is for my 3D printer to print it. Here I can see exactly what it's doing layer by layer. The light green lines are the travel lines, and the dark blue lines are where it's actually going to be printing the material. Now I can save for an SD print. This saves the file onto a flash drive, and then the flash drive plugs directly into the 3D printer. First I'm going to raise the nozzle to get it out of our way so we can clean the bed. Next I'm just going to wipe down the bed with the dry rag. The next step probably sounds weird, but I'm going to use uh, hairspray and put a thin layer on the bed. I know that seems weird, but I read that online and since I've started doing that, I've had zero problems getting my prints to start. Next, we select the model that we're gonna be printing. First thing that's gonna happen is the bed is gonna be set to 80 degrees Celsius and start warming up. Next, the nozzle is gonna be set to, in this case, 230 degrees Celsius and start warming up. When the nozzle starts warming up, it'll move into a different position. At this point, I stand idly by with these pliers to peel down the pieces of plastic as it starts dripping out of the nozzle. The reason I do that is so that there's not a tail of plastic at the start of your print, which sometimes messes up your entire print. At this point, I just watch to make sure it gets a good start. The first thing that every print does, based on most settings, is draw an outline outside of the actual finished product. I think they do this just to get any air bubbles out of the bottom of the nozzle, to warm up the 3D printer properly, and to make sure that your settings are good my final part will all be inside of what it's printing right now. Honestly, at this point it looks so good and there are no clumps inside the print area that I would feel totally comfortable walking away. I like to check in on my models every hour or so to make sure that they're working just as they should. All right, you already know more about 3D printing than I did when I started, so enjoy watching me struggle through getting this 3D printer set up and I'll show you how you can do it yourself. Seems like a basic kit of stuff. You have some documents that came with the 3D printer, a power cable, a couple of brackets, a mystery bag, the base, 
and what appears to be the towers. That is just not a lot of pieces. Two brackets, one that has a little square on it. Uh, this is the little square. How neat is that? C cable, a uh, little flash drive, must have my first print on it. See that? Spare ribbon cable of some sort. And then we have a couple of ball bearings, a wrench, some Allen head screws. I'm guessing this is what holds the tower on, and a few bolts. Let's do that. Okay, how to properly connect flexible flat cable. It's funny, a uh, few YouTubers have noted that the flexible flat cable has been problematic, and this is detailed instructions on how to properly connect that cable. I bet this is in response to their initial reviews that were not all perfect, but that was in February. This seems to be a slightly later model that's seen a couple of changes. The tower went on with four Allen head bolts, two on each side. It was a little tough to clip onto the base, but once it was in, it was really easy to install. The picture of the spool holder makes it look like it's being mounted from the front here, but it actually mounts from the back. That, that took me a second to figure out. Uh, I'm also glad that I ordered plastic because it didn't come with any. And I kind of thought it would. We are mostly set up. There were a lot of these little cable connections to make at the bottom where the tower and the base meet on both sides. There were also ribbon cables to connect uh, at different parts of the machine. This is the little wheels that you use to level the bed. There's underneath the bed. And then you have these roller bearings under the bed. I don't know if you can see that. But those are all individually adjustable. You have to adjust the amount of tension that each one of those roller bearings, and under the bed there are six, have on the rail that they're sliding on. Here we have three bearings, and this bottom one is adjustable. I can adjust the tension. Basically, there's a nut here, and by rotating it one way, uh, the tension will get a little looser. Rotating it the other way, the tension will get a little tighter. This works because it's eccentric, kind of like a camshaft. It will just be different tensions in different positions. It's aluminum railing, so you don't want it too tight or too loose. I think you should be able to slide it uh, without it rotating when you're holding it with two fingers, um, but not, not with one finger. It shouldn't slide, it should spin. So there are a handful of roller bearings on here that you have to adjust. Um, the belt tension works the same way, but I left all my belts exactly as tight as they were in the beginning. One other thing worth mentioning is this little wheel adjusts how much tension will eventually go on the plastic wire. By default, frequently people find that that tension is too high, so I'll probably be spinning this a little bit to reduce the tension that will be on the plastic filament once I get it in there. We are now at step nine, which is connect the power cable and turn it on. Uh, <laughs> seems exciting, but I'm gonna proceed with leveling the bed. To level the bed, you move the nozzle to a corner of the bed that you're about to level. Then you slide a piece of paper under it and you adjust the height of the bed in the corner using a hand adjustment until there's just a little tension on the paper between the bed and the nozzle. Had I not watched a YouTube video, I would have had no idea how to do this. It took me about half an hour. I kept going back to corners, they would be out of adjustment, and I would make another adjustment. This is very important to get a successful level bed and a good 3D print. That's it, the artillery Sidewinder X1 is set up. Uh, there's a couple USB slots at the front. I'm gonna connect the one that came with this, hoping there's a file in it for me to print because I believe there is. Now if I hit print, choose a file. I'm gonna choose that file. Cube. Up or down, ready, choose file again. Um, do I want to print this model? Confirm. But 
I don't have any filament in my printer. Uh, stop. Stop print confirm. Okay, uh, I need filament. And I don't know what my settings are. I don't know if this is set up for PLA or P... Whatever the other things are, but this is P-E-T-G. So this is kinked. I'm gonna cut out the kink. So this really is meant maybe for people who've 3D printed before, uh, setup wise. Um, I think it's fed now. This is just a thrill a minute. You missed it. Something just happened. Went to the change filament buttons and I hit uh, extrude. And now it's heating up the nozzle. Load filament to extruder and click confirm. Confirm. Ooh, a little pile of poos coming out. You see that? No, it's loading and it tells me to wait. Ooh, getting the glob. Hope you see that glob. Confirm. Court return. Okay, back, print, that, yes, confirm, there's a little pile of poo over there, hopefully that doesn't mess everything up, but it looks like it will. Oh, this is the first time I've ever printed anything! It's making the... Oh, it's leaking! It's been leaked. Okay, oh, uh, my pile of goo is in a bad spot. Pile of goo in a very bad spot. The rest of it looks good, though. I just need to get that plastic out of there. there. Look at that! I think that's actually printing. Ooh. Things are not going perfect in Cube World. I think once stuff starts going bad, stuff tends to go really bad really fast. Well, part of me wants to leave it to see what happens, but stop print confirm. Must be degrees Celsius because it's pretty hot. Got a pile of. Already have a mess happening under there. Can I clean it? I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not. Ah, hope it doesn't mess me up. Oh well, uh, seems like it's printing. I'm printing at a lower speed, hoping that makes a difference. This is attempt number two. This is going well. Yeah, it is going. It looks, it looks pretty good. No brain, no problems. This is our best, best print yet, folks. Alright, quick situation report. I've tried printing about eight of these now. This is my best one. Uh, as you can see, the others have been a hodgepodges of different forms of messes. I know part of the reason this last one failed is because the print was not sticking. I am now warming up the bed for print 11. I'm using a Cura slicer with some slowered travel speeds. I imported some PTG settings that I found on Reddit. And for the filament type, I'm going to a higher print temperature and I'm decreasing the bed temperature to 70. And those are the only settings that I've really changed. Obviously I'm using PTG instead of PLA. If you're going to buy one of these, buy a roll of PLA. Temperature finally got up to speed, so it is starting to print. And I can see already we have some string problems, but I'm gonna see if I can try to grab that. Look, 
becomes problematic. I'm gonna let it run. Check back in a bit. super happy with this. I cannot believe how nice this cube came out. The walls are super smooth. There's no clumps or holes. Uh, uh, this is much nicer than I was even expecting. <laughs> Since I finished that video, I have made a few more things with my 3D printer. I've had almost no problems. I haven't tried any other 3D printers, but there's no reason I can't recommend this Sidewinder X1. It was easy to set up. Once I had my settings right, it just worked. Now that I have maybe 20 hours of printing stuff on it, I've had no other problems. Everything just seems to work. Thank you so much for watching these videos. I will leave links in the description for as much of the stuff as I've bought so far. If you have any specific questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Otherwise, click here to subscribe, click here to watch more videos by me. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.